glow sticks. In fact, let me show it to you with this glow stick. I know that many of you uh, have glow sticks and you brought them in with you. And mine's just like yours, okay? Except mine right now is not glowing, okay? It's just, it's just here. I mean, if I hold it up next to the glow light, though, it looks like it's glowing, doesn't it? And you see, this is how, this is how it works sometimes. Because Satan or other people just say, just go to church. Just read your Bible or just pray. And you think, oh, well, if I do that, if I just go to church, then that makes me a Christian. Or if I just pray, that makes me a Christian. Or if I just read my Bible, that makes me a Christian. And we think, oh, wow, you know, I'm glowing in the dark. Wow, I come to church. I read my Bible. I go to youth group. I must be a Christian. Or my parents. Well, they did all this stuff. My parents pray. My parents make me read my Bible. My parents make me, you know, go to church. That makes me a Christian. But I'm going to tell you, it doesn't make you a Christian because look, let's just say that this light represents God. Because the Bible says that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. So God is always light. And so this glow stick, apart from God, it's not glowing, right? But just because you get close to God, it doesn't mean that you're a Christian. And so many people think, oh, I get close to God. I come to church. I sing songs. I listen to good music. I don't say any bad words. Or I don't watch those kind of movies. Or I don't do this. I don't dress that way. Or I don't look that way. Or I don't talk that way. And so that means I'm a Christian or I'm a good person. But I'm going to tell you, that doesn't make you a Christian. Just because you get close to God, just because you come to a place where God things happen, doesn't make you a Christian. And you can leave this place today and you can still have darkness on the inside. You can leave this place today and still have sin on the inside. But what has to happen for this glow stick to work? Huh? Okay, now watch. Now see, what happens is this. This glow stick, and you all, you all just said it really clearly, that all you have to do is break it. But, but why do I have to break it? What's, what's on the inside of this? Toxin. No, it's not toxic. Who is okay, there's a little piece of glass that, that's encapsulating another chemical, right? It's encapsulating something that, that once it's broken, it activates with the other stuff on the inside and causes it to glow. Let me just, let me just tell you that this is a picture of us as, as human beings. That on the inside of us, we all have the capacity to shine. In fact, Jesus, when he was here on the planet, he said, You are the light of the world. He said, don't let your light be hidden. He says, you can shine in the midst of darkness. You can shine as brightly as a star in the midst of darkness. But what has to happen is this, is that God has to be activated in our hearts. God's light has to invade our darkness. You see, we all have the capacity to hold God inside of us. We have a, a void or a place inside of us that's only shaped for God. And the Bible says this, that when we are broken, when we have a broken and contrite spirit, when we have a broken heart over our sin, and we say, God, you know, you're right. I've done things that are wrong. I have sinned. I've, I've you know, been mad and, and ugly to my brother or sister. I have disobeyed my parents. I have done all of these things, and I am really sorry for it. And look at what happens. The Bible says that when we're broken, watch. And just like that, did you see how quickly the light invaded that? It was like instantaneous. It wasn't like, it, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I had to pray and then I got to wait for God to come. No, it's just like that. When you pray and you say, God, forgive me. God, I am a sinner. God, I have done wrong things. God, I have been ugly. I have been unkind. In fact, God, I've just been playing around. I don't really know you. I just come to church. Or I don't really know you. I just do good things. But God, I want to know you. God, I don't want to be separated from you. The Bible says this, that when we come to God and we are broken over our sin and we say, God, I understand that I have done wrong. And I understand that Jesus died in my place so that darkness would not rule my life, but that your light could invade my space. Do you know that the Bible says this, that any person who prays and asks God to come into their life instantaneously, God comes. Instantaneously, the Holy Spirit is made alive in our lives. It's like this glow stick was broken, and just like that, it was activated. When we pray and we say, God, come and change my life. God, I mean it. I'm serious. I want to follow you. God, I want my life to shine for you. The Bible says this, that anyone... 
who is, a new, who is in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, everything becomes new. Let me put it in light and dark terms. It says this, all the darkness is gone because the light has come. The Bible says that God is light and in Him there is no darkness at all. And so even when we do a, a thing like this, we do it because we want you to understand that God is a light in the midst of darkness. And He wants you to be lights in the midst of darkness. You know why? Because you might be the only light that somebody else sees. You might be the only light that someone else can see. And if you don't, if I were to do this, if I were to take this and I try to hide it and I say, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but I don't want anybody to know. I don't want anybody to know that I'm a Christian. I mean, yeah, I like coming to youth group and I'll, I'll be this way at youth group, but, but man, when, at school, no, I'm not going to talk about God or I'm not going to read my Bible or I'm not going to pray over my lunch. Are you kidding me? People are going to laugh at me. I'm not going to do that. Then this is what we do. We try to hide the light and we cover it up. And the Bible says this, that if we cover it up, you know what? It's covered up to all those who really need to see it. It's covered up to all the other people who are in darkness who are looking for light, but they can't find light because you as a Christian, you try to hide it. Now watch this. If I just take my hand off, wow, that's amazing. Look at how bright that is. But, you know, we can cover it up. And some of us, some of you guys, some of you have already been Christians. You've been Christians for a while and you prayed to ask Jesus maybe last year or two years ago, but you haven't been living right. I've done so, it three times already. Wow. Well, then. I've done it one well, good. That's great. That's great. And you know what? Maybe you did do it then. But I'm going to ask you this. Are you living right? Just because you asked Jesus into your life doesn't mean that you're living right. It doesn't mean that, that you've given him full control of your life because some of you, this week your attitude has been horrible. Some of you, this week, you've been ugly to your friends, ugly to your parents. Some of you this week have been that way. And this is exactly what you've done. You've covered it up. You, oh, I'm going to heaven, but yeah, I'm not going to live for Jesus now. I'm going to tell you this. Jesus didn't die just so you can go to heaven. <clears throat> Jesus died so that you can be light on the earth. And so I'm going to ask you, have you ever done that? Have you ever said, Lord, I want to be light on this planet? God, I need to be light in the midst of darkness because you know what? If, you don't, if you're not the light, who's going to be the light? It's not, it's not your friend's responsibility. It's not your teacher's responsibility. It's not my responsibility. I'm not going to meet your friends. I'm not going to go to school with your friends. But every day, your friends see you. Every day, your brothers and sisters, your parents, they see you. And you're either shining like this or you're covering it up. Or maybe there's no light in you at all. And so I'm going to ask you, is there light in you? Uh, you don't have to answer it out loud. You don't have to answer it out loud. I just want you to think deep, deep in your heart. Is there light in me? Have I really, when I when I prayed and asked Jesus to forgive me, did I really mean it? Or was I just doing it because, well, it's just what everybody did? Look, I don't want you to do something just because I'm telling you it's a good thing. I want you to do it because you understand, man, this is what I need to do. This is this is right. I need to live for Jesus. And look, if you're not in a place where you're ready to do that, that's okay. You don't have to do it. But I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to, to you, don't, you don't have to close your eyes because we're sitting in, in a dark room. But this is what I want you to think. I want you, what I want you to think about. I want you to ask yourself this question. Is there light in my heart? 